Hello and welcome to this video on the dual filter from Soundforce. Of course, a dual filter does what it says on the tin. Let's see what's to come. So the dual filter is two separate filters in a 12 HP module. It's based on the later Korg MS-20 filters, which use OTAs, and there's a low pass 12 dB per octave or high pass 6 dB per octave. And on screen now, you can see that these are selected by moving three jumpers per side on the back of the module. So you can set this up as a dual low pass, dual high pass, high pass and low pass, whichever way around you want. You just got to move those jumpers. Each filter has two inputs. Input one has a level control and input two is a little hotter. And we'll look at those differences when we check out the sound of the filter. We have two CV inputs with attenuators, resonance CV with an attenuator, and our output, and of course, frequency and resonance controls. And that's mirrored on both sides. And at this stage, I'd like to thank Soundforce for sponsoring this video, which means I created this demo video for them. There's a timing index on screen so you can skip around how you see fit and we're going to get right into the demo although we will later in the video come back to these talky talky bits and discuss why this is so affordable. So let's get stuck in. So let's check out how the dual filter sounds. Have a saw wave from a standard analog oscillator. Here is the low pass, no resonance. Nice characterful. gentle kind of croak, even without much resonance. Let's take the module out, swap those jumpers and try some high pass sweeps. really cuts that fundamental and lower end in the wave nicely. So that's how the filter sounds in both low pass and high pass mode. We'll check out how to make a band pass later in the video in the patch examples. A quick word on levels, input output levels. This is your standard 10 volt plus 5 to minus 5 volt input from a standard oscillator, and the output there is on the scope. Now, going into input 1, even with the level up full, we do lose a little bit of signal. Now, that's because they've cleaned this up and dropped the kind of gain staging within the circuit to allow a bit more headroom, and it keeps the filter that bit cleaner. However, going into input 2, get quite a lot more output, still with a tiny bit of level drop from input to output, again just to keep this gain staging correct within the filter, but you have two options there. And of course you can mix waves and get even more level into this, so here's another saw wave oscillator back into input 1. So just a quick thing to note on levels, in practice it's meant absolutely nothing, I've just used it like any other filter. But wanting to be open and give you some clarity on this, I thought was worth mentioning. 
the dual filter sounding glorious in stereo with every bit of modulation I can get out of the thing. Now if I just turn the filtering up, we have a mix of waves, I've kept the cable colours different. The green cables are going into this left hand side and that's the saw and the sub one. So again, that's completely panned hard left. This is going into a VCA afterwards. And then these purple cables is a sub two and the pulse with some PWM. Now, if you notice, these are going through two different VCAs. The outputs hard left into one VCA, hard right into another. And there's a mix of envelopes giving a nice dynamic feel. So that's the kind of base state of the patch. As I drop the cutoff, have different sequenced modulation to resonance, LFOs into CV2s and these two envelopes into the CV1s. Now I'm using the dual filter here as a stereo high pass. I have a stereo drum mix, which losing my melody is this. It's coming in left and right into the dual filter and I have the same voltage going to both sides with both sides set as a high pass so that I can use this like a high pass in stereo. Here's high passing just the right. And just the left. This is your curve is the difference between the left and right out if you're curious. Now, because there's no single pot to control this like it's a stereo filter, as in one cutoff knob moves both frequency controls, I've set up a voltage here coming into the data. It's this yellow line, and when I move this up, you see it move up on the data. This voltage raises the cutoff on both sides. And this is just tuned in to give me a nice enough spread to cut out that bass drum cut into the upper mids and let me use an external offset to control it as if it's stereo. Now this sounds glorious with some resonance and the first thing you notice is that low end. Make sure you've got some headphones on or decent speakers. It is stereo and you can really hear that kick. Really cleanly boost in bass there. And you can shift that emphasis around in the low end. Really blows out that low end. A little bit of resonance for a bass boost, and then a resonance sweep. Lovely clean, kind of crisp high pass filtering. Melody back in. A bit more res. The melody isn't going through the filter by the way, just the drums and percussion. So in this patch we're going to look at making a bandpass filter. And just the current obsession is noise and making things kind of that warm tape vinyl noise blanket. And just making things a little bit crusty. So that's what I've done here. I've got a stereo modal synth plucking around got lots of crunchy crispy noise and a mix of both of those has been sent into an effect a delay in this case with a bit of reverb and that's coming into the dual filter and patching from one side to the other this is a high pass this is a low pass and then i'm coming out and i've got some modulation over both sides now let me get rid of the actual source sound and you're just listening to my crusty noise and effects trail that's being filtered I remove the modulation and with no res you can see how this goes from full bandwidth, full signal to closing in the lows, closing in the highs I should say, to then carving out the lows. And this creates a band, a simple bandpass filter that removes frequencies both higher and lower than itself. And if I was to move both of these cutoff knobs together, a 
very much works like a band pass. But I'm really enjoying step modulating the low pass. So you can hear that moving quite resonant there in time with the sequence. And then LFO modulating the high pass. So that's how we create a band pass and then how I've been playing around with it over my effects trails. So my last patch, the crusty ambient band pass over my effects and noise, might not have been the clearest band pass example. Removing this modulation, let's just hear it on a simple droning wave right out of DCO. This is a high pass, this is a low pass, so coming into high pass, out of that into the next filter and then we're recording the output of the low pass side. Now by moving these two together, these will act like a band. So by modulating them together, and I'll plug in the same LFO to both sides, This works like a band pass that shifts them both together. However, if we start to play around with these frequencies, we can control bandwidth. We can have a wider moving band, for example. No resonance yet either. Or we can close them closer together. Very thinner, tighter band that's moving around. Adding the same amount of res. And that's a nice thin band pass. Or a much wider one, as this has carved out low end and this has carved out high end. Different resonances can give nice character too. And it's really easy to kind of fine tune band width, resonance, and all sorts when you're playing around with a high pass into low pass to make a band pass filter. But one cool thing, and the reason why you get this extra little bandpass example, is to actually invert the signal. So the minute this single LFO, basic triangle wave, is moving them both together. If I invert one side though, they're moving closer together and further apart. So instead of two bands going like this, or like this, they're now doing this meaning the frequencies close in and open back out again. Again, you can play with the width by moving the cutoff slightly differently. We could take that up to audio rate modulation too. When you get that audio rate in tune, it sounds glorious. Let's add some res. And that's just some more exploration of bandpass filtering with the dual filter. So when I create videos and sponsored videos are no different, I make the video. This doesn't relinquish control to the manufacturer. Soundforce asked me to make a demo of the dual filter, sponsoring the video. I make a demo for the dual filter. However, they did ask me to talk about why this is so affordable. And that's fine, because I think it's an interesting point to talk about. So this is aimed at around 149 euros, including VAT, which will be about $160 for the dual filter if you're in the US. Now it's not cheap because in any way they've cut corners and used crappy parts their words. It uses metal shaft pots, funky con jacks, and the same metal panel as the DCO. These are rock solid. What's actually moving, and you can maybe hear that, is the actual case and everything around it. The pots don't wobble or anything at all. This is a cheaper, more affordable module because it's a very efficient design and the manufacturing is both in-house and at the supplier. And Soundforce also have a very short supply chain. So they really wanted to fill that gap in your rack with a nice dual filter that sounds great, doesn't scrimp or cheap out on parts, but is really affordable for people. And they wanted me to tell you about that. So there we go.
So here's a really simple patch to show two things, oscillation and creating kick drums and pinging a filter. Both of these outputs are going into my mixer and both of them are panned mono. Now these are both set to low pass and for this it largely doesn't matter. Now to make a filter oscillate and create a tone, often a pure sine wave tone, we just need to bump up the resonance and dual filter here is certainly no exception, it oscillates. So tuning that suitably low and then adding an envelope, which will be our pitch envelope, frequency now being the pitch of this oscillation as opposed to cut off frequency of some filtering. Let's plug that into CV1. We get a nice simple kick drum. If I change this envelope shape, and this is continuing to just drone away. So if you're actually making your own percussion sounds, you'd probably want to run this through a VCA or low pass gate to fully close off the sound. So that's my kick drum. I'm gonna mute this channel. And then I'm gonna use this envelope to ping this side. Pinging is getting the filter just before oscillation and then exciting it, actually going into the input, not the CV input with a short trigger. In this case, I just have a decaying envelope. You can hear that envelope is just exciting this circuit and as the resonance goes just below oscillation, we get a simple percussive note that we can tune. Very soft 808 like bass drums. To sort of clave little kind of knocks and percussion. Both sounds in. Let's get into a more detailed patch of this and make some quirky minimal techno out of it. So let's check out audio rate modulation and getting these throat like glottal vowel style sounds. Have a saw wave that's just coming from DCO next to it into the filter, nothing else going on. That's kind of creamy, resonant, full fat cream, full fat dairy, resonant low pass sweep. Now I have a sine wave coming from another oscillator that I'll plug into CV input one. And there's all those throaty overtones. Playing around with the rate of modulation. You can tune this in. Let's get some weird FM digital phase modulation type overtones. As the modulator is more related to the tuning of the actual input audio. Let's go up a bit. And of course we can go really high, get up into those more vocal like tones, down sampler kind of vibe. So let's build a more elaborate patch, that's just some basic audio rate modulation. So here's just a musical sequenced example of audio rate modulation. I can remove it. This is the saw wave out of the DCO, fault proxy sequence and nothing else. And then a bipolar envelope into the cutoff. Nice kind of tasty resonant filter action. Nice and percussive. Same vault proctive sequence into this very basic oscillator because it's just a sine wave coming in. So super basic, but tracking the same pitch. I've already tuned these to an interval that I like between the actual source sound and the modulator. And these nice glassy, almost kind of digital edged overtones. I'm going to 
drop this down an octave on an external switch. Down an octave again. And back up. Two octaves. It's well worth exploring audio rate modulation. So here's a thick, throaty, bandwidth adjusting drone from the dual filter. Let's lose the effects. They sound lovely actually. Losing those. Here's the dry single output from the dual filter. I'm going to remove some audio rate modulation. My signal path here is a mix out of the DCO, video for that in the description, into input one, out of this, which is high pass on this side, to input one on the second filter. Then we're coming out. So it's a simple high pass, low pass configuration. The two LFOs here are modulating the filters, unsynced and drifting really nicely with these interesting LFO shapes. Adjusting bandwidths as these filters open and close. Now here's a sine wave running at audio rates into the high pass. And there's some nice additional overtones. I'm just going to swap this modulation around. Res. Ooh, there we go. And some effects back in, because why not? So we've had some crusty ambience this time, with some nice stereo panning by attenuating the same LFO, this green trace on data and then attenuating one positive, one negative, just like the LFO, this re-triggering envelope shape, a little bit of audio rate modulation from DCO, lots of noise and crusty kind of crackles mixed into the source. And it's just creating this nice stereo swirling patch with a dual filter over the whole output. And that's what we're recording. Hope you like this video on the dual filter from Soundforce. Be sure to check out the DCO video demo linked in the description. Support my work on patreon.com forward slash divkid. Any questions, leave them in the comments. It'd be great to chat. And I'll see you next time. Cheers for watching.